In this video, we're going to talk about the image control that allows us to display images in our Silverlight Windows Phone 7 applications. So as you can see in Visual Studio, I have a new project called Images. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the toolbox and drag and drop an image control onto the design surface. Now admittedly, I probably should be typing this in based on the lecture I gave you in day two, right? However, I wanted to point out a little helper in the properties window. There's an ellipsis button next to the source property. The source property is going to define where the image should come from that will be displayed in the image control. I'm going to click the ellipsis to add a new image to our project. So I'm going to click the add button to find a image on our hard drive. And Windows 7 comes with a number of sample pictures in the pictures directory. And so I'm going to uh, select the koala.jpg and select open. And when I do, a couple of interesting things happen. First of all, it creates an images folder with the koala.jpg loaded into that images folder. So that's the first thing. The next thing is that we see this path. And this path has kind of a strange look to it, slash images and then a semicolon. So this is going to refer to the deployment package. And what comes after the semicolon, component slash images slash koala.jpg, will reference that file within the deployment package once it's loaded onto the phone. So component referring to the XAP file, uh, the, the, the zap file that we've already looked at when we were uh, investigating the folders and the directories on day one. Now, this all together, this path, is actually referred to as a URI, a Uniform Resource Identifier. It's kind of like a URL that you might be familiar with over the internet, except a, a URI can reference uh, any location, not just a web-based location. So in this case, it's referencing the location internally within a file. This will come back. We're going to need this whenever we programmatically select a file to load into the image control in just a little bit. At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and click the OK button. You can see that our Koala image is loaded into our control. And it looks great, except there's one little problem. When I start moving the dimensions of the image control around, it stretches the Koala out of proportion. So how to resolve that? Well, if you look directly below the source property, there is a stretch property. And uh, this is pretty important. By default, it's set to fill, meaning that the image is going to fill the entire area of the image control regardless of its dimensions. So this means that if you change the proportions like we have of the image control, it'll distort the image's appearance. Let's do this. Let's set it to uniform. Now that will keep the perspective correct, but it only will honor either the vertical or the horizontal proportion of the image within the image control. But it will not crop it. So that's the good news. Let's set it to uniform to fill. Now this is going to honor both the vertical and the horizontal proportion of the image. However, depending on how we adjust the, the, uh, the, the size or the dimensions of the image control, there's going to be a, a lot of clipping involved. So it just depends on how we plan on using this image control. I'll go ahead and set it oh to about right there. And I'm going to set it back to uniform. I think for my purposes, I can ahead of time determine exactly how much space I want to give this image. OK. So next up, what I want to do is programmatically change from this koala picture to a different picture that I'm going to add to my application. And I'm going to need a button because I want to programmatically fire this off when somebody clicks my load button. So I'm going to double click my new load button. And um, let's go ahead and get rid of a little remnant from an earlier version of this project. All right, now we are just about there. Great. OK, so now what I want to do is type in some code. What I'm going to need to do first of all, before I do that, is actually add another item to the images folder. And I'm going to select the images folder, then select Add Existing Item using that little drop down arrow next to the Add New Item button. 
That'll pop open the Add Existing Item dialog. I'm already in the Images directory, I, uh, having navigated to it earlier. And this time I'm gonna select the penguins.jpg, click the Add button. So now I have the koala and the penguins.jpg. So here's the game plan. I want to create a new instance of an object that will essentially represent the new image I'm gonna load in. And then I'm gonna set the source property to that instance of that object. And the object that we're gonna use is called a bitmap image. Bitmap image. And as you can see, we don't currently have a reference to the namespace that contains the bitmap image class. So using the trick that we learned earlier on day one or day two, hold down the control button on your keyboard and hit the period and that will pop up the little helper that will add the system.windows.media.imaging namespace. And so now it recognizes the fact that we have the namespace added in our using statement and I can create a new uh, my image equals new bitmap image. And so in the constructor, what I'm going to do is use this URI source. In other words, I'm going to tell it the location as I'm creating a new instance of the bitmap image. I'm going to tell it where it can find a, uh, the picture that I want to use. So this is where I'm going to create a new URI and I'm going to pass in the string that represents the location within the deployment package where Silverlight's going to be able to find that penguins image. Plus I'm going to tell it what type of URL uh, that it's looking at. It's a relative URL. It's relative to the deployment package, not a specific URL. It can't go to a specific location on the internet, for example, to find this image. That's all that means. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. Let's go with uh, images. component images penguins.jpg and then I'm going to tell it the URI kind and this is going to use an enumeration well enumeration is kind of an advanced topic but you can see an enumeration when you use your mouse cursor or I'm sorry when you use your keyboard cursor and you it'll pop open the options for you and you'll just select one in this case relative then the second step of this process is to set the source equal to my image. Now let's run the application. And it seems to work. Great. My final code example demonstrates how to allow the image to be zoomed in and then allow the user to scroll around inside the image. So the first thing that I want to do is go into the XAML window. In fact, I'm going to just double click the XAML code editor and I'm going to surround this image control with a, uh, with a scroll viewer. Now we've used the scroll viewer already. This time what we wanted to do is uh, be our window into our image. So I'm going to set and create a little windowing area by setting its margin and then I want to set the scroll bar visibility the horizontal scroll bar visibility to visible this is what will make it uh, allow us to scroll around within the image all right with that set then I'm going to uh, change first of all remove the margin completely and then I'm going to change the width to 800. I'm also going to set the height to 800 and let me sp let's just preview what this will see if we have a zoom and we do have it zoomed in so that's great. I may need to lo move my load button down just a little bit. All right but this should work now so let's go ahead and run the application and now you can see I can scroll around the picture using my mouse button to simulate the user holding their finger down and moving around the picture. Okay. Okay, so to wrap up, by default, uh, the images will be compiled directly into your zap file, the XAP file. 
meaning that if you add 10 images and each are one megabyte, then you just added 10 megabytes to your application. That might be okay, but keep in mind that the first generation of the Windows Phone 7 may only have eight gigs uh, of a flash drive. So uh, the user might attempt to download it over a bad connection or they may not have a whole lot of room left on their drive. So this is where limitations of the device come into play and you have to keep those in mind as you're building your application. So a few practical tips. When it comes to adding media to your, uh, to your applications like images and video and audio, uh, first, uh, by doing this, your application is going to start growing in size. If your users see that your application is massive, they'll uninstall it to make room for the latest Lady Gaga video, okay? Uh, there are utilities that will help shrink file size of images and video by stripping out color information and compressing the image. I don't have any specific recommendations, unfortunately, but I know there are both free and commercial utilities for images, video, and audio. The second option to compiling your images, video and audio into the zap file uh, that gets distributed to the phone is to dynamically pull those resources from over the internet only when they're absolutely needed. So the initial size of your application remains small but will rely on a connection to the internet to pull down the images, the audio and the video files as needed. Now depending on how large those files are, whether the user is getting a good phone or Wi-Fi signal, this might significantly degrade the performance of your application. So there's the trade-off. A more advanced scenario may be to uh, compile some of the files you need or that you anticipate that will be needed often at least to start up the application into the zap file itself and then allow the application to download others in the background that it anticipates that it might need uh, very soon. You could even cache the files by saving them to the user's phone in isolated storage like we're going to learn about later on day three. Again, these are some pretty advanced scenarios and I'm not going to show you how to do them in this series, but after you finish this series of videos, you should have a pretty good idea uh, at least of the approach of how you would go about it and then you can hunt for some examples online that would demonstrate this technique. Okay, so that's the basics of working with images within your Silverlight applications. Thank you. Mm -hmm.